morning, church staff. It's good to see you here. Sorry for the booming voice coming out all of a sudden. It's good to welcome you. Whether you're here in person, we're glad you are. Or for those that are watching on uh, Tabor TV or watching us at Pleasant Manor, Ina Grafton Gage, walking all around the world through the internet. My name is Paul. I'm the director of senior services here at Scott Street Church. And it's a delight to welcome you. And our service is available on HD through YouTube and Facebook if you're using an internet connection. And we would love to help you with that if you need help at all. But let's uh, pause for a word of prayer this morning as we begin. Father in heaven, we thank you that we are able to come into your presence. And your word says that we are able to come boldly into your presence. We pray that in these moments you would calm our spirits and quiet our minds so that we would be able to hear your voice and any distraction that would keep us from completely being with you this morning, we ask that it be removed. The most important thing that can happen, Lord, today is that you have an opportunity to speak to each and every heart. Lord, I pray that every heart would be soft before you, that the seed of the word would take root and would begin to grow. So we ask that you would lead us into joy and celebration, knowing that you love us, and that you call us to be your children. Father, free us. Tune our hearts to hear your voice. Help us to understand your word, and then to apply what we learn. So we open you to our hearts, our homes, our community, and our church. We ask that you would lead us in Jesus' name. Amen. A number of things that are still happening, and in fact, even more things seem to be happening as we are meeting both in person and online. And this week we want to make note of our bubble clubs. We are trying to reach out to our, our children uh, as best we can, those from age 3 to 13. And so Pastor Phil is developing a wonderful program called Bubble Clubs. And uh, some, some of their kids are able to have some limited contact with others, whether it be their cousins or siblings or close friends. And so each club uh, consists of the kids that sign up together Therefore, they're able to physical distance and wear a mask. And uh, the, the program is being adapted to safely have uh, interaction with our children, which is so important. So if you want more information on the Bubble Clubs, please contact Pastor Phil here at the church. Now, something we're doing for the month of December is we are combining both our ladies' study and our men's study. And we're combining it into an Advent Bible study, which we're holding on Thursday evenings at 7 o'clock by way of a Zoom call. Now we are using the material that we have circulated already uh, for our Advent reading, and we're doing the study part of that each week. This past week, we had uh, over 20 people that were joining us online, and if you'd like to join us online, please just contact the office, and we'll make sure you get the link for that. Uh, this past week, Pastor Rob and Sarah led the study. This week, my wife Joan and I will be leading the study. And so we invite you to join us on Thursday at 7. It's a one-hour study, and we'd like to have you as part of that. Now, not this week, but next week, our young adults are going to be meeting under the direction of uh, Pastor Phil, or Pastor Kyle, sorry, as looking at you and saying one thing and doing another. How many have ever done that? Uh, the rest of you are in denial. And they meet every other week, and so we encourage our young adults to to uh, be tuned into that. They meet downstairs in the fireside room. And then some of the events that are weekly here, we have our, our junior youth and our senior youth. Our junior youth meet on Tuesdays at 7, and our senior youth meet Friday at 7. Now, this is the last week for both of those before the Christmas break. Now, they're going to be beginning again in January, but they're going to begin online. Okay, there's uh, some concern that we have that after Christmas, we want to just monitor what the numbers are going to be. We saw in the United States that following their Thanksgiving celebrations, their numbers started peaking with the COVID. So we are going to be extra careful, and our junior and senior youth are going to meet, but they're going to do it virtually online as they begin in January. Stay tuned for the exact dates of that. Now, our regular weekly events, we have a morning Bible study on Wednesday at 10.30, 
And for the rest of December, instead of going through the book of Exodus, I'm going to be t taking the Advent story, the Christmas story, uh, week by week. So we encourage you to be a part of that. And then Wednesday evening, we have our prayer meeting that's also online. Uh, we are continuing for another couple of weeks with our Lunch from Scott Street program. And if you would like to have a delicious lunch, my goodness, these soups are made absolutely from scratch, and they're totally up to scratch. They are great. And if you'd like to receive one absolutely free of charge, just let us know. Let us know by Friday, and we'll have it by the next Thursday. You'll be able to pick it up. Fresh made, it'll be frozen when you receive it to maintain the integrity of the food. Now, they're going to be taking a break. I think the 17th is the last Thursday that soup will be available until after the Christmas break. So just keep that in mind. And by the way, soup this month, one of them is the Italian wedding soup, and it is fabulous. You will love it. We also have a study hall that we've opened up for our, our high school, college, and university students that are able to come and study together downstairs in a very safe environment. And if you'd like to do that, you need to register, and it's available from Tuesday to Thursday from 9.30 until 3.30 in the afternoon. We have a number of students that are taking advantage of that, and so it's a great time to have some social interaction safe distance with each other, but also be able to converse with someone other than just your computer. So we're encouraging that. Lastly, we are collecting money for our Christmas candy bags. On the way out, you'll see a couple of buckets. If you have loose change that you would like to uh, contribute towards that, our children love to have this treat at Christmas. I think our older children love to have treats at Christmas too. And so we are working towards that. Well, this is your exercise moment when you get to stand and wave to everyone because we can't meet in person. So, so just to, let's everybody just stand. Let's greet everybody with a, a, a nice wave and a smile this morning. Our second Advent reading is, is, is following. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. In addition to relighting the candle of hope, we are also lighting the candle of love. Our prayer for today is, our dear, our dear loving God, who revealed your love to humble servants like Mary and Joseph and demonstrated your love through the life, death, and resurrection of your son, as we light these candles, remembering Christ's birth and anticipating his return, we ask that you, that you teach us to love others the way you love us. Let our hearts be filled with your love, love for each other as your family and love for the world around us. As we live through these days of isolation, may you draw us close to you and close to others in prayer and support. Help us to show your love in such a way that the world would see our love and glorify you. Amen.
shall come to shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations mine, all peoples in one heart, Bid envy, strife, and quarrel cease. Fill all the world with heaven's peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Welcome to Kid Zone, girls and boys. Today is Advent number dose, and we're talking about peace. So the passage that Pastor Rob's going to be looking at in the sermon today tells us a story about a bunch of shepherds who are watching their sheep in a field, when suddenly some angels appear out of nowhere. And they say to the shepherds, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. What do you kids think of when you think of the word peace? Where do we need peace? I sometimes think about bullies, or I think about people who are mean or violent, and how we want peace between us and between the people who are mean. Or I think of big wars and battles around the world. I think of two armies that are fighting and killing each other, and how I wish there was no war on earth and that these armies didn't have to fight and kill each other. These are the two things I think of when I think of the need for peace. Is that the kind of thing you were thinking of? Well, it's true. Those are situations that we really want and need peace here on earth. But the kind of peace that the angels were talking about in the story, it's even bigger than that. As I think we'll hear from Pastor Rob in a little while, the angels weren't just talking about peace between people here on earth. They were also talking about peace between people and God. Huh? But normal sights, Phil. God wasn't at war with us, was he? Oh, little Kyle, you scared me. Well, no, not in the way we usually think of being at war. But ever since Adam and Eve, the first humans, sinned against God, there's been this separation between people on one side, and God on the other. And in the story, when the angels say, peace on earth, to the shepherds, 
They are announcing Jesus has been born. Jesus came to the world to remove that separation between people and God. Oh, I think I get it. Little Phil, where do you guys keep coming from? So, peace isn't just not fighting. Peace is also bringing people closer together in unity. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it, little Phil. Jesus brought peace to earth by making it possible for us to be united with God. He removed that separation that was between us because of sin and brought us closer together. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. 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 Very cool. cool. That's cool, really, cool, that's, cool. that's, that's, that is great. That is anyway, great. Anyway, uh, I gotta take off. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys see, around. See you around, right? normal size okay. Phil. Have a good one. See ya. Oh. Eh. Oh, you got it. Sorry. So, little Phil, you wanna buy a vent? Thank you, Phil and Kyle. I don't know who enjoys those more, us or the kids. <laughs> it's good to be together again and to come together in prayer. Shall we bow and pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us together here in this building, together in our homes, whether it be in our living rooms, our studies, our family rooms, on our computers or on our TVs, Father. Where you are, where three, two or three are gathered together, there you are also. And I thank you for that. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that is here, filling this sanctuary, filling our homes, and filling us with your peace, with unity. And we come to you this morning and we want to pray for those in our church family that are struggling. Father, you've carried us through another week and there have been struggles and there have been victories and there have been failures. There have been words said that shouldn't have been said, but you continue to love us and we thank you, praise you, and love you for this. You are a holy, holy, holy God. And as we gather together here this morning, we want to pray for our elders and our staff here at Scott Street, I thank you so much, Father, for bringing these people to Scott Street for this time as leaders. And we just pray for your Holy Spirit to be upon them, that you continue to guide and direct them. We thank you for Travis and the gifts and talents that you've given to him and that he's using those to be a leader. And we pray for him and for Sarah and just bless them, meet their needs, Father. You know what they are, and just pray that you'll meet them. Thank you for Phil as well, and that he's using his creativity to reach people, not just children, but also other adults as well through his videos. And I just pray for him and for Rachel and for Avery. Continue to guide and direct them as well. And I also thank you in a special way for bringing Emmanuel to us, that he's able to use his gifts and talents to make the sound sound good and to make the videos and just help with the AV, Father. Thank you for him and bless him and his family as well. Father, there are those in our church family that need healing. There are those that we know about and there are those that we don't know about that are suffering in silence and we pray for their healing especially as well. But we also want to pray in a special way for Marta, for Elfie Mason, Father, we also pray for Jake and Laney Friesen at home, and also for John Clausen, who's had a fall and is recovering. Bless them, Father. Heal them, restore them, but most of all, we pray for peace for them. We also want to pray for our dear friend Anna Wall, confined to her home, to her room. Father, thank you for her, and bless her. Meet her needs. We also thank you for our programs and ministries. And as some of them may be winding down this week, Father, help us to remember the things that we've learned through these programs. And I thank you in a special way for the Advent Bible study that we can participate in on Zoom. Thank you for Joan and Paul who will be leading it this week and just be with them as they're preparing for that. 
Father, we also thank you for, the, for those that are contributing to the church financially. And thank you for all the gifts that keep coming together every week so that we can continue to open our doors and be here and run the programs that we want. And also to contribute to ministries that are working outside of this city, outside of these walls, like Niagara Life Center and Youth for Christ and there's so many other ones, MCC that we're involved in, and um, also the missionaries, um, yeah, the Heberts, Doug and Deanna and their family, Father. We thank you for that. And we want to pray in a special way for the funds that are gathered together, that you will give those that are administering these funds wisdom, how to use them properly. We also want to pray in a special way for Josh and Natasha, Natasha Mason in Waterloo. Thank you for them. Thank you that you continue to guide and direct them and bless them, we pray. We also want to pray for Vision Thailand. Father, Thailand is so far away from here, and we don't always know what's going on there, but we know that your hand is upon these people, for they are your people, and that you will continue to meet their needs, we pray, that you will continue to bless them and continue to further your kingdom in that country. And Father, Last but not least, we want to pray for our world that is in the grip of a pandemic. We thank you for those that are working so diligently, so hard to find a vaccine. And we pray for these vaccines, Father, that they would be effective, that they would do what other medicines cannot do. And we thank you for our doctors, for our emergency workers, and for our workers in the units where COVID cases are, Father, just bless them. Give them wisdom, guidance, and direction, but most of all, compassion for their patients. And we also want to pray in a special way for Pastor Rob as he brings us your word. Open up our hearts, our ears, our minds to the truths that you have in store for us this morning. We pray all these things in your holy name with thanksgiving. Amen. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from Luke 2, verses 1 to 14. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room, guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, but they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. In the book of Luke, we read about the most exciting event to ever happen in our world, the birth of Christ. Luke's gospel lays out a story filled with anticipation, intrigue, wonder, and hope-filled news for humankind. It was the day when God's great plan of salvation and redemption was irrevocably launched. And as we look to the cast of characters God gathered together, our eyes are open to a new response, focus, and growth in the Christmas season. Today, we'll look at the angel's joy in response to Christ's arrival and find our own as we proclaim the arrival of Jesus Christ.
Thank you. Thank you for the scripture reading, Naya. It's so good to be together this morning. Every Saturday night, I was talking earlier to all the folks that are our wonderful team that put together the service this morning about my anxiety dreams. I, I worry about ice and snow. I worry about you and getting out of your houses and from Tabor, getting over here safely. And uh, so thank you. And then we worry about when you are here that we wear our masks and we take care of one another. And then yesterday I was uh, talking to another pastor in British Columbia and, and they can't open their doors. You know, and pastors, friends up in Toronto, the, the, the churches, some of the churches I know and love, they, they too have their doors closed and are unable to meet. So um, who'd have thought there'd be a time when we just feel blessed that we can gather? Behind masks, I don't care, we're together. And, uh, and we're serving God and, and preaching his word today. So I pray that uh, this word is, is impactful for you today. We're talking about peace, and we're talking about the angels and their proclamation of peace. I want to start with a, a, a Christmas tradition. There were two guys, Larry Kunkel, I just love that name, these are real people, and his brother-in-law, Roy Collette, back in 1964, so like 50, over 50 years ago. Uh, Larry's mother gave a pair of pants to, um, to him. So his mother gave him a pair of these, they're called moleskin pants. Mole skin pants. They're kind of like uh, corduroys, I think. Jake, you probably know the moleskin type of pants. They're smooth, almost leather-like. And, um, and Larry was living in Minnesota, and at the time, you know, it was, it, was a, it was in the winter season, and he found that the pants froze that they weren't the right type of pants. So he decided he would send them to, for Christmas to his brother-in-law, to Roy. So Larry sent them to Roy, um, and he put them in a, um, in a pipe. He stuffed them into a pipe and sent them to his brother-in-law, a one-inch pipe. And um, the next Christmas, um, the pants came back. And this, this Christmas, they came back um, stuffed in a coffee can, a small coffee can. They were somehow pushed inside a coffee can. And so, so began this tradition of sending the pants back and forth every Christmas. Next year, Larry put them in an oil drum, and he filled the oil drum with concrete, and he had that shipped to his brother-in-law. Uh, Roy then sent the pants back in a 600-pound safe. This is a true story. 600 pound safe that he welded shut. And um, so every year they, they kept getting bigger and bigger how they were going to send these pants back. Um, the, in the, the last Christmas, Roy was trying to send the pants back and he was trying to encase them in glass. He wanted to fill molten glass and then have it, you know, um, cool down and the, the pants would be inside this ton of glass. But the pants caught fire and they were turned to ash. And so instead, he sent a little urn um, to Larry that had the ashes of the pants in the urn, uh, the, these poor unwanted pants. For 25 years, they got sent back and forth. And that was their tradition. I don't know if you have such a tradition. I had a tradition with a friend uh, as I was leaving for Africa. Uh, um, I had a stuffed peacock. There's, there's a long story. Anyway, someone had given their pastor a stuffed peacock. And so I gave it to one of the elders in the church because I wasn't going to take a peacock to Africa. And um, that Christmas in the mail in Nairobi, Kenya, arrived a peacock. A, my stuffed peacock arrived. But it had been sitting uh, in transit and it must have gotten wet. So when I opened it, it was indeed a surprise. A beautiful surprise, which I reboxed and sent back to him in Canada. Anyway, that's another long story. We have all these traditions at Christmas. 1882 began the tradition of electric lights on houses on Christmas trees. That began in 1882. We have Christmas lights in our backyard. Sarah didn't like the Christmas lights I bought um, because they were they were a cold light. And gentlemen. If your wife asks you to get Christmas lights, ask, do you want cold or warm? And it would appear that Sarah wanted warm lights. So we have a tradition of warm lights in our backyard. Um, 
I like to think that we have lights because they remind us of the star that led, you know, the wise men, or, or Jesus being the light of the world. But I have a feeling it's mainly because Sarah likes Christmas lights. Um, we also have a Christmas tree in our house, a big, beautiful Christmas tree. And I was looking, where does the tradition of Christmas trees come from? Well, they say back in Germany, 16th century, Martin Luther was working on a sermon. And he was working outside, walking around, and he saw the stars through the trees. And he said, that reminds me of Christ in the nativity. And he brought a tree in the house. And he was the first one. But I think it's really an old Mennonite tradition. I think if we look deeper, we would find that this is indeed a Mennonite tradition. So why do we do all of these things? Why do we have these traditions at Christmas? Well, we have to look back at the first Christmas. Uh, let's look Luke 2, 11 to 14 here. Luke 2, 11 to 14. Today in the town of David, a Savior is born to you, and he is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. That first Christmas that, that our traditions are born out of. The angels explained this good news of great joy for all people. That a Messiah was to be born in Bethlehem. Oh, I'd love to take you there one day to Bethlehem. Such a, an interesting little city. A Messiah is born in Bethlehem. And peace will be ours because of the child born there. So it's important to understand the peace that the angels proclaimed was not saying that from now on there's world peace. Thank you to Phil, little Phil and little Kyle, uh, helping us understand the concept of peace. They weren't saying that from this day forward there will be no war. We know that's not true. You know, the Middle East at that point was a mess, and I don't think things are much better there or anywhere else around the world even now. The angels were talking about a peace that was bigger than world peace. They were talking about a peace that is built between all humanity and our loving Lord Jesus. We now have peace with God. The peace on earth that Jesus brings is a peace that we can have between ourselves and our creator through Christ. It's a peace in here. The peace that Christ gives is an internal peace. Um, and that peace should impact our world through us. But it's first an internal peace. This peace comes from faith in Jesus and the forgiveness that, that we have. Uh, we see an example of this in um, Luke chapter 7, there's a story of, it. she's called, if you turn in your Bible, it's called the story of the sinful woman. So there was a woman, um, and everybody knew that, that whatever she did for, uh, in her life, that she was a woman who, who lived in sin. And she came to Jesus one day, and, and she was weeping. She came and she sat at his feet, and she started weeping. And uh, it's a scripture, it's a beautiful scripture. Um, and she was, she was kissing his feet. It's, 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 we don't do that in our culture, but it's a sign of great, great love and, and repentance. And, and he anointed Jesus' head with, with aromatic oils. So there she was blessing his head and, and, and touching his feet. I mean, very uh, dramatic and, and powerful. Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. She's doing this. She's caring for him and his feet and anointing him. Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who forgives sin? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. She's been forgiven so she can go in peace. Forgiveness breeds peace. And because of the forgiveness of our sins, we can have peace too. No wonder the angels proclaim glory to God in the highest. God has brought peace to us, to humankind. Peace on earth, on those the Lord's favor rests. So who does God's favor rest on? Who does his peace on the people on whom his favor rests? Well, are we the children of God? Yes, we are. Does, does Christ love us? Yes, he does. Does he forgive us? Yes, he does. Does he call us his people, his children? Yes, 
Yes, he does. So who does his favor rest upon and who has his peace? We do. Peace on whom his favor rests. So I'd like you to look at the person beside you or someone else in the sanctuary. Because on that person, God's favor rests. Look at that person. They're not just a person. They're a child of God, John, and God's favor and peace rests on you. Matt, Tim, Jake, God's favor rests on you. It's, I don't know if you, you've seen those movies where there's this uh, sort of a swirling of the spirit and all of this comes down on you, onto a person in the movie. Well, think of, think of this person, God's favor resting on you on every man and woman here. Abraham, God's favor resting on you, and it changes you, and you have peace. And then our goal then is not to keep the peace, but to pass the peace. Jesus brought peace to us through God. One of the greatest responses we can have is to become peacemakers, to pass the peace, or to be peace proclaimers. I like, I like those words. Um, we need to be peace proclaimers in our, in our Christmas, uh, Christmas traditions and, and celebrations. The truth is many families experience pressure and difficulties during Christmas. Nearly every family gathering has at least one relative who um, will we'll use the word, one relative who requires extra grace. Don't say their name out loud, but you know who they are. If you don't know who they are, they might be you. Just a thought. Every family has that person that requires extra grace. Um, I've heard that one of the blessings of our COVID era this Christmas is that there will be less stress in every house because we don't have to decide if we go to my parents or Sarah's parents. You know, you don't have to decide on your family or the, your in-law families. We don't have to struggle. Sarah and I, every Christmas, we think, oh, we got to hop in the car and do that long drive up through Quebec and uh, New Brunswick to Nova Scotia uh, so that we can visit her father in Halifax. Well, we can't do that this year. And Dad, I know you're watching, and we love you. We won't be home for Christmas. How many people are having to say that? We won't be home for Christmas. I know that we will probably not have a white Christmas, but we will definitely have a Zoom Christmas with your dad and with the rest of my family probably as well. In order to see each other, we're going to have to look on the computer. That brings its own stress. As we seek peace in the Christmas season, we're, we're going to have to find peace in the midst of, of, of how we find ourselves in the midst of covid at Christmas, we have a special opportunity to proclaim peace in our families in a similar way that the angels said it. In Matthew 5, 9, Jesus tells us, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. This passage shows us that um, those who count themselves children of God can join with, with Jesus in proclaiming peace, in making peace. Now, there's a difference between peacemakers and peacekeepers. And Jesus is asking us to be peacemakers makers. Jesus brought peace between God and mankind, humankind. He brought back unity and harmony. Thank you, Phil and Kyle, for focusing on that word, unity. Peace, this unity that we have between God and ourselves, is because Jesus brought us peace. I want to look at the difference between peacemaking and peacekeeping just a little bit. Peacemaking is what God did for us through Christ, restoring a relationship, bringing harmony. It goes beyond just... Um, avoiding um, or separating those who are having conflict. It means restoration, um, repaired relationship, and unity. Jesus made lasting and restorative peace between God and us. I'm glad that the angels didn't come and say, and on earth, tolerance to those that God puts up with. Didn't say that. The angel said, peace on earth, on whom his favor rests. God doesn't tolerate us. He loves us. Jesus doesn't put up with, he doesn't look down at us and think, oh, that sinner Patterson again. He doesn't. He doesn't. He loves and he gives me his peace. 
He doesn't say that he's putting up with me. His favor rests on me. Isn't that incredible? His favor rests on us. Yeah. I don't deserve it, but I get it. And I'm grateful. Amen? Yeah. And that makes a difference in my life. There's more for us this Christmas season as a son and a daughter of God. There's more for us to serve as a peacemaker this year. In the midst of the stress of COVID and isolation and all that's going around us, God has given us this Christmas season, this Advent season, to be peacemakers. We need to proclaim the, the good news of Christ in a new and fresh way. What an unusual and wonderful time to proclaim Christ. To proclaim that he transforms us. I'm not, I'm not locked up in an isolated prison. I'm free to serve him as best I can. And if i got to serve him behind a mask, I'll serve him behind a mask. If i got to serve him on a video, I'll serve him on a video. Wherever I have to, I'll serve him. If you decide the only way this Christmas that you can keep your family happy and have no drama is to give everybody the gifts that they want, even though you can't afford it, uh, you're probably not proclaiming peace. You're trying to be a peacekeeper, and you'll end up poor and probably quite unhappy. I remember giving my little nephew the gift that he wanted. I can't even remember what, what it was. It was some type of doll that he wanted, and he ended up playing with the box. You know, and we had suffered to try to find this toy, and in the end, he wanted the box. I, I wonder if, if we could sit down with our families this Christmas and help them understand and have a discussion. What do you really want this Christmas? You want love, joy, peace, patience, kindness? How about, how about we, we give each other some goodness? How about some faithfulness for each other? Can we be faithful one to the other? Can we be self-controlled? Can I count on you? Wouldn't I love to be able to count on you every day? I tell you, my Sarah, I don't know how she's done it, 33 years. I've been counting on that lady. Hasn't let me down yet. Praise the Lord, it's a miracle, and she's put up with me, which is an even greater miracle. Do you think we need more stuff in our hands this Christmas? Do we need more things that we have to store in our garage because we don't have room in the house? Or do we need more love? And do we need more peace? Let's think about what we, what we give. And give not out of obligation, not, well, I'll give, I'll, give, I'll give him this because then he'll stop complaining. That won't work. That won't work. The season of Advent is looking to God for peace. It's a time for us to, to say that my life is not centered on me. It's centered on Jesus. My life is not completely concerned with and consumed with me and, and what I want. It's about Jesus. So let's think about that difference and be peacemakers, not just peacekeepers. Yeah, we, we, we don't want to create discord, but we want to we make peace. Think about the difference. One of the dangers of this season is getting so caught up in the traditions of Christmas, so wrapped up in trying to create this idyllic holiday that we forget our real mission. How many of you put your Christmas tree up early this year? Did you? Yeah. I've been seeing Christmas lights all over the place. It's, it's beautiful. It's as if because of the isolation, we've got to do something. So we're putting our Christmas lights up early, and we're starting our tradition. Sarah has the tree up, and it's so beautiful. James 3.17 says, But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. It's an interesting scripture about being peacemakers. Peacemakers uh, have a certain characteristic about them. They are peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. That's the kind of peacemaker I would love us to be this Christmas. Can we look at those values? First of all, pure. How are we in our purity this Christmas? Are we, are we being peacemakers, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere? Man, I want to be with that person, and that person is you, and I want that person to be me. 
Lord, give me the wisdom that I can interact with these characteristics with my family and my friends. I, I want God to show me how to proclaim his love, sometimes with words, but always in my actions. Maybe I should speak or maybe I should act quietly. I know that as a follower of Christ, I need this season to live as Christ would want me to live. To live with hope, not fear. To live with peace, not anxiety. And some of us, some of us have anxiety. We carry it around with us. It's like a faithful friend. We don't need something outside to create anxiety. We have it within us. Yeah. And we're, we're dealing with our own inner anxiety while the world outside of us has anxiety. We need to build the peace here so that we can manage and bring peace there, outside us. If you're typically struggling during the Christmas season, remember that most people aren't born annoying, rude, opinionated, and cruel. People are not that way. People who act this way, maybe, maybe you, you have friends, you have family members, who, who seem to be annoying and rude and, and cruel sometimes. Remember that people become annoying and rude and cruel and opinionated and angry because of what the world throws at them. And, and that's how they choose to respond. The one thing we all share is that we're broken. The one thing we all need is grace this Christmas. And a peacemaker looks beyond that rough exterior. A peacemaker will show mercy, remembering that everyone needs Jesus. Have you given up on any, anybody? Have you given up on a, on a brother or sister who's an addict? Have you given up on a friend who, who just can't get their, their life in order, making terrible decisions? Well, Advent, Christmas, is a season when, when we remember that, that Jesus was born for everyone. And no one is beyond his love. And we, we try to reconcile with people with whom there's a, there's a wall of hostility between us and them. And it's up to us to knock down that wall. A peacemaker goes beyond that rough exterior. A peacemaker shows mercy, remembering that everyone needs Jesus. I, I worked in a maximum security penitentiary for three years. Spring Hill Penitentiary. And I am proud that I have friends who are murderers, who love Jesus. I'm not proud they're murderers, and I wish that it had never happened. For many of them, it was the result of abuse and neglect. And from the time they were born until, you know, they, most of them, they made their, their big mistakes in their 20s and late teens. And I've learned not to give up on anybody. And I, this was, it was an all-male prison, and... And, and these guys, man, I love them. And I, we, we need to see people through the eyes of Jesus, the eyes of our creator who brought peace to the world. There's no one beyond God's grip. So in the midst of our traditions and our celebrations, don't forget how precious everyone is in the sight of God. Even the most belligerent, difficult, and draining people are precious to God. And Jesus came to earth for them as much as he came for us. So before you proclaim peace to them, you first need to possess it yourself. Now, I'm not saying that anyone expects you to be perfect. None of us is perfect. However, it's difficult to proclaim the message of God's peace to others when we ourselves don't have it. It has to be real. Otherwise, people will know that you're faking it. I mean, none of us are perfect. We are not perfect. But we have to have God's peace within us. We're focusing, trying to be like Christ, and then letting our cup overflow. In order to walk and to remain in the peace of Jesus, we need to be disciplined in our minds. There's a saying, think about what you're thinking about. Think about what you're thinking about. Scripture tells us to do no less when in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We take captive every thought to make them obedient to Christ. If we want peace, think about what you're thinking about. Are you, are you chipping away at your peace because you're allowing yourself to think, to act, to, to, to dream about things that should not be in our heads? If peace starts here, we've got to start here too. Start here as well in our minds. 
When it comes to living in peace and proclaiming peace, it's important that we take control, take captive our hearts and our minds for Christ's sake. Peace proclaimers use wisdom and patience instead of jumping to conclusions about others. We need to be patient with others. We need to be wise. Peacemakers refuse to take offense when others are slighted. If someone wants to cut in front of us and buy their Christmas oranges, if they're in more of a hurry than you, bless them. Bless them in line and let them go ahead of us. We'll get there in time. Peacemakers refuse to involve themselves in careless and unkind comments. You know those things that you want to say to that person who drives creatively in front of you? Maybe we can, maybe we can harness our tongues and, and give those thoughts to Christ. Peacemakers won't give themselves over to sharing rumors about others or gossiping about people. Peacemakers always hope, always believe, always endure, and they are you and me. Let me finish with a beautiful story. There was a man, Alvin Strait, 63 years old, had a disagreement with his brother Henry. They lived 400 kilometers apart. The two never spoke for over 10 years. One was about seven years older than the other. Henry was older. When Henry was 80 years old, he had a stroke. And when his brother Alvin heard that his brother was deathly ill, he decided it was time to be a peacemaker, to reunite with his brother before it's too late. He was going to be a peacemaker. But at 73, Alvin's eyesight was so bad that they had taken away his license and he couldn't drive. So he loaded up a trailer with gasoline, small trailer. He put on that trailer some camping gear and some food and he hooked the trailer, true story, to the back of a riding lawnmower and he set off to see his brother 400 kilometers away. They're in the Midwest in the States. The lawnmower had a top speed of five kilometers per hour, about walking speed. And he set off on a mission to bring peace between himself and his brother. Things didn't go well, and it took him, the lawnmower <laughs> is not meant for long distance journeying. It took him six weeks, but he got there. 400 kilometers. By the time he got there, his brother was doing much better. Uh, Henry was feeling much better. They'd, he didn't die from the stroke, and he was feeling better. When he saw his brother's love and his brother's desire to, to have peace between the two of them, Henry was shocked, and he realized his brother loved him. And Henry sold his house and moved 400 kilometers to be back closer to his brother. It's a wonderful story. It's a true story, too. Um, the things we do to try to bring peace between ourselves and others. So we all know that we can't change anyone. There's not much we can do to change anyone except uh, we change ourselves first. But we can proclaim peace. How far are you willing to go to bring peace to those around you? How far are you willing to go to be Christ? to your family, your co-workers, your neighbors? Are you willing to take the first step? Are you willing to take a stand for peace this Christmas? Alvin went over 400 kilometers on a lawnmower in order to restore peace. Jesus came from heaven to earth to bring peace between humankind and God. The angels came to proclaim the news, peace on earth to those on whom his favor rests. The question this morning is what we need to do. What do you need to do to be a peacemaker today? May you have God's peace. May you be his hands and his feet and his mouth making peace this Christmas. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent Christ so that we can have peace with God and with one another. We ask that you would increase our peace and, and pour out your peace to others through us. Father, help us to pass the peace, not to hold it in ourselves, but to pass it heart to heart. 
And Father, if there's someone that we need to speak with, a family member, a friend with, with whom we've been, we've been divided, Father, give us the strength to be peacemakers, to be considerate, submissive, merciful, and sincere. Father, help us to live in hope, not in fear. Help us to live in peace, not anxiety. We give you our minds, our hearts, our lives, and we say, Father, give us peace and help us pass the peace today. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Matt and, and our pastoral musicians this morning. What a blessing. What a blessing. We look forward to seeing you um, this week. If you can join online to take in one of the studies, join us Thursday on Zoom if you'd like for a great study in Advent with uh, Paul and Joan leading. Next Sunday we have the, the, the blessing of, of a certain wife of mine, Dr. Sarah Patterson, bringing us the message. 
So the joy message, next Sunday Sarah will be preaching. So I look forward to hearing what she has to say and, and I know she'll be a blessing for all of us. So thank you, Sarah. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have chosen us to be recipients of your peace. So now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Bless you again this week. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to depart the way we have learned to depart. Our ushers will help us. They'll be coming. We'll be leaving from the back to the front. I'm so glad that we are able to be here and worship. So thank you and, and bless you and be safe this week. Peace. Peace. Thank you.